Would you like a brandy? Oh, I don't think so. Unless you would. No. You've been in a quiet mood all evening. Have I? I'm sorry. I guess I just haven't had very much to say. Oh, I have a good time with you and neither one of us says a word. So do I. I think it's important for two people who care about each other to be able to share quiet moments. It's true. Oh, look. What? The Pleiades, see? That, that cluster of six very, very bright stars up there. See them? Yes. My father taught me the names of the stars when I was seven years old. He taught me how to chart a boat with them. What was your father like? Huh? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Most people thought he wasn't worth very much, and I, I guess they were right. He wasn't. But he taught me the names of the stars, and I like to remember them that way. That's a lovely way to remember him. <laughs> Is it? Well, he walked out on us when I was nine years old. But then I guess I had a better break than you did. Oh, I don't know about that. There were people at the Foundling Home who were very... They cared about me very much. Oh, were there? Yes, there were. There was one nurse in particular. Her name was Ina O'Donnell. She had an Irish brogue, and she laughed all the time. I adored her. She gave me a doll one Christmas. Oh, I love that doll. I still have it. Vicky. Yes? You know how I feel about you, don't you? Well, I... I'm not sure. You must be. I guess I am. And you? Do I have to say? You don't have to say a single word. Because I know. I've wanted to do that for such a long time. Strange. No. It's just about a year since I came back here. And the only thing that I had on my mind was the destruction of the Collins family. My little governess didn't figure in on my plans. I tried awfully hard to ignore you, Vicky. I know. But I couldn't. I couldn't get you off my mind. It was the same way with me, Brooke. Was it? Right from the start. I never thought I'd find someone like you. But now that I have, I, I'll never let you go. Not ever. saying that ten minutes ago. <laughs> I know. Did you up tomorrow at seven? At seven. 
Good night. Oh, excuse me. Uh, it's all right. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you were here. Please forgive me. I, I was just taking these books of the Collins family history back to the library. How's the research coming along? Oh, very well. Vicky's been very helpful in finding material for me. Well, not as much as I'd like to be. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no, it's all right. Burke was just leaving and I was on my way upstairs. As a matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you, Miss Hoffman. Oh? Uh -huh. About your book. Oh, well, in that case, I'll say good night to you now. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Shall we go in here? Fine. Oh, Vicky's a lovely girl. She certainly is. Well, what did you want to say about my book? Well, actually, uh, I didn't want to speak to you about your book. Uh -huh. No, it's about Vicky. What about Vicky? You said she was helping you with your book. And as I've said before, I don't think she should be involved. Vicky is a girl with a very vivid imagination. She's very fascinated with it, with the legends of Collinwood. And they tend to make her imagination even more vivid. Make it run wild. Now, twice, Vicky has imagined things that didn't exist. Once at the old house, she imagined she saw the figure of a little girl at the top of the stairs. And later on, she imagined she heard a little girl singing in an empty room. Now, it seems to me, it seems to me that that sort of thing is very bad for her. She should be living in the present. The present meaning you? Yes. Yes, if you like. I'm in complete agreement with you. You are. I realize that that, that that Vicky tends to get overstimulated in working with me. I don't think she should be encouraged to work with me. I'll do my best to discourage her. Well, I'm surprised. I thought you'd want her to work with you. Oh, not if working with me hurts Vicky. I care about Vicky. I've become very fond of her. Well, that makes two of us. I'll do my best to keep her away from the, the family legends and the Collins history and, 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 and the old house. Well, I'm very glad to hear that. And I'm grateful for your, your cooperation. You have my complete cooperation. Well, I won't keep you any longer. Good night, Mr. Devlin. Good night, Miss Hoffman. Beautiful sunset, isn't it? Yes, beautiful. You look very nice. Do you have a date with Mr. Devlin tonight? Yes. Well, I had a nice chat with him last evening. I think he's a very interesting man. He is. 
Miss Hoffman. Julia, please. Julia, do you know anything about dreams? Not much. Why? Well, I had the strangest dream last night. And it's been bothering me all day. Well, what was it? I dreamt that someone was in my room. In your room? Yes, and that I was in some kind of danger. But the oddest part is, is that I wasn't afraid. Why not? I don't know, but I just wasn't. Do you think it means anything? I'm not qualified to say, but most people have dreams that they can't interpret. Well, I have a feeling that this was more than a dream. I think someone actually was in my room. Why? Because when I woke up, the lid of my music box was open, and it was playing. And when I went to sleep, it was closed. But why would anyone go into your room in the middle of the night? I don't know. But I think that someone was there. And that frightens me. Doesn't make any sense. Why would anybody go into your room in the middle of the night? I don't know. Unless perhaps it was David and he came in and opened the music box as a pra practical joke. No, he, he said he didn't and I believe him. Have you asked Carolyn or Mrs. Stoddard about it? I don't want to worry them. Do you know what it was? What? I think you did it yourself. You opened the music box. No, I... I would have remembered that. Haven't you ever done anything when you were half asleep and then you didn't remember it later? Yes. I'm sure that's what it was. Well, it is the only logical explanation. I'm sure you have nothing to worry about. I'm not worried. It's just strange, that's all. I'm sure it was nothing. Hello, Miss Hoffman. Hello, Mrs. Dowdard. How are you coming along with your research? Oh, the work's progressing very well. I have another appointment with Mr. Collins today. You've been spending quite a bit of time down at the old house. Oh, he's been very helpful. Well, I'd better get to work. Of course. Vicki? I just had a phone call from Burke. Oh? He's made a firm offer on the Seaview property. He has? Are you going to sell it to him? Yes. Barring any legal complications, I have to speak to my lawyers before giving him a definite answer. I see. But I don't think there will be any complications. I have a feeling that Burke will be the new owner of that house within a matter of a few days. Are you pleased? Very. I thought you would be. Didn't you come on that first call? Well, I got here as quick as I could. Well, did you do as I instructed? Yes. Well? I, I watched the house all day long. Devlin didn't go near it, and Miss Winners didn't go out. Well, they have a date this evening. I want you to follow them. I want a full report on everything they do and everything they say. I can't get close enough to overhear their conversation without getting caught. It just isn't possible. Make it possible. Well, I'll try. You know, Willie, I don't accept excuses. 
Now you have your instructions. Carry them out. You're afraid, aren't you? Afraid? Of losing her to him. To Kevin. I'm not afraid of anything. You might as well accept it, Barnabas. Accept it? You're gonna lose her. What? She's in love with Devlin, I can tell. You can, can you? Please. It would be very easy for me to kill you, Willie. Remember, the next time you offer an opinion, it may well be your last. I'll remember. Get out of here. What does that mean? It means the injections are beginning to take effect. The structure of your blood is beginning to change. You still think you can cure me? Well, I'm more confident than ever of a complete cure. If you continue to respond to treatment the way you have been. And if I don't? We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. How do you feel? All right. Then sit down and let me check your heartbeat. I didn't dream we'd have this success so soon. You really consider your experiments a success? Certainly. They've been very successful. I wonder. What? Oh, nothing. What were you going to say? I wonder what life would be like if you could change me. You don't trust me very much, do you? I admit at first I was skeptical. And now? I don't know. I expected skepticism initially, but it will fade away in time. A normal man. To be able to live the life of a normal man. What would it be like? The isolation and loneliness you know now will be gone. The loneliness. Yes, I have been lonely. You'll be free to live among other men again. To give and accept love. Yes. It's what you want, isn't it? I want happiness, as all living creatures do. Well, you'll have your chance if I can cure you. You must cure me. Oh, I'll do everything in my power to, but you must cooperate with me. 